Hi buddies, how are you doing? Panarvas Jayakumar here from Panarvas Jayakumar Law Classes. Uh, so friends, we all do love a game of cricket, don't we? So cricket is a passion in our country and cricket is a religion in our country. Uh, so if you remember a few years ago, there was this match fixing allegation against various players uh, in Indian cricket, which brought down the game, so to speak. And of course, later there was a resurrection and many cases were going on. Have you ever wondered what is the concept of match fixing and how is it linked to law? Is match fixing really cheating? Uh, is match fixing a punishable offense? And if yes, under which law? Very interesting. So I just came across a recent judgment on 10 January 2022 linking match fixing. This was a match fixing that happened in Karnataka Premier League between uh, players of Karnataka and of course among them and the team owners of various uh, KPL teams, Karnataka Premier League. So the question before the criminal court was, can section 420 of Indian Penal Code with respect to cheating, you know you call somebody a 420, 420 actually means section 420 of IPC. So can that be invoked was uh, question number one, because it is cheating. So basically have you cheated the public because when a person buys a ticket and watches a match he is buying a ticket thinking that there would be a fair game so there if the players involve themselves in match fixing would that amount to cheating as per section 420 of ipc similarly is this a criminal conspiracy because you are conspiring to earn money and cheating the public so there is one more section called 120 capital b would that be invoked and also here the Karnataka Police Act speaks about anything, anything related to betting in any gaming, uh, there would be punishment. So would that amount to gaming? Uh, these three were the questions raised before the uh, Honorable Court, Honorable I Court recently in the KPL saga match fixing. So we always used to wonder whether criminal charges under IPC Indian Penal Code can be brought forward. Is it? are you cheating the entire public by committing match fixing so it's a very beautiful judgment so before that let's just understand what is your section uh, 420 and section 120 capital b i'll just read the section this is how we need to slowly try to decode the bear act and try to understand uh, what are the sections and how they are relevant to the current context because we all love a good game of sport and we tend to sort of you know think about whether match fixing would indeed be a crime under the Indian Penal Code, right? So let's read. Whoever cheats, whoever means let's say a player, cheats and thereby dishonestly induces the person. Let's assume I am the person. I am a spectator. Whoever cheats, so it appears that a player is cheating me and dishonestly inducing me and to deliver any property. Through that deception, I am delivering any property. Property can be anything including assets, immovable, immovable, including money. Money also is property. So, when I am paying my hard-earned money for a ticket, am I being induced to pay and have I been cheated is the question. Or to alter, destroy the whole or part of a valuable security or anything which is signed or sealed, which is capable of being converted into a valuable security shall be punished which means the player shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to seven years so these players here in the karnataka premier league were charged were being imprisoned or rather the charge was for seven years imprisonment so they went and put a petition saying that this is not cheating this is point number one and linked to this my dear friends is 120 capital b criminal conspiracy so whoever is party to a criminal conspiracy coming together to commit a crime because they know that they are cheating so that if it's rigorous imprisonment etc it is as if they abetted the offense which means what it is as if they help that entire offense otherwise if in other cases they say term not exceeding six months or with fine with both so basically these two questions were there and also the karnataka police act which spoke about any form of betting so they said any form of betting which includes gaming any sort of gaming is prohibited and there are other penal provisions as per the Karnataka Police Act, right? Now the question was between these, uh, you know, players that is uh, two very good players actually, CM Gautam and Abrar Kazi, uh, batsman and this guy is a bowler as well, Abrar Kazi. So these two people were arrested. So let's see the, you know, entire 
scheme of things i have just highlighted will only to the highlighted points see the first petition is abrar qazi is accused number 1 and it's in the police second is amit mavi he is also one of the uh, uh, players three is ali ashfaq ali ashfaq is one of the owners of the kpl team and of course we have uh, cm gautam who is again a cricket player he played for you know ipl also way before even abrar qazi played they are all ipl players and they didn't get chances there and they were karnataka players and then eventually this happened so here the petitioner cm gautam so these guys the police have charged them against um, crimes for the crimes in under, under section 420 and 120 capital b of ipc which i just read now all right so the thing is you have cheated the public the question before the court was have you really cheated the public right and uh, let's see the facts of the case if you see they interrogated the cricket players coaching uh, staff etc this was something that happened in 2019 between 15 to 31st august of 2019 so there was a match going on between bengaluru blasters and bellary tuskers in which uh, ali ashpak who was actually the owner of some random team called belagavi panthers he wanted that team to win so he came to this bengaluru blasters and bellary tuskers and asked them to lose that match so that their team could win belagavi panthers in the you know points table could jump something like that so he went and spoke to gautam and abrar of uh, you know these teams belari uh, tuskers and bangalore blasters and they said that you should concede 10 runs in over number 7 so that immediately advance will pay you 2 and 1/2 lakhs and after the match is over 5 lakhs so 7 and 1/2 lakhs my dear friends to concede 10 runs in over number 7 in 1 over and also in the previous season also there he went to the same Uh, some other accused buki came to the sabrar kazi etc and told him to lose the match to shomaga lions in the said match similarly on 26th day 2019 between mysore and bellary he again went and told you have, you have to play slowly so ensure that you play slowly and uh, one more buki approach gautam and he told that you stop the bowling right you do not give the bowling to one bowler you stop him i'm going to pay you 10 lakh rupees this was hap- this happened during the match on a whatsapp call so think about it guys as a spectator i will pay money to actually watch a game fair and square and this is what these people indulge in so the issue before the court was again whether 1420 can come or not or what it is is what we need to discuss and 120b will it come or not so if you see the argument was people buy tickets to watch a match and they would definitely want a fair game and the people are cheated and the property involved here is the money so definitely it comes under 14420 uh, because 420 comes the linked offenses 120 capital b that also will come so two things were there and also karnataka police act come so guys after all the checking all the evidences etc beautiful judgment i mean as per law beautiful judgment what did the court said that basically for invoking section 420 my dear friends of the indian penal code the essential elements must be deception dishonest inducement of a person to deliver any property was there deception maybe the players you know deceived the public second did you deliver the property yes you gave money you gave money to obviously Pay. You paid money to watch the match. Is it dishonest inducement? Was the question. Was did the players induce you to actually give the money, or was it done voluntarily? Was the question. So the buying the tickets you have induced by cheating is what they said. Inducement to buy the ticket. But what did the court say? A general feeling will arise that basically a cricket player has cheated the lovers of the game. this eventually will rise to an offense but they said that the entire concept of me giving the ticket my dear friends paying for the ticket is done voluntarily i did not know what is going to happen later but i bought the tickets voluntarily i was not induced to buy the ticket think about it here it is the intention whether when i was buying the ticket was there an intention from your side did you induce me to buy no i voluntarily bought the ticket what happened at the match is something different but was i as a public general public induced to buy no i was not induced to buy there was no inducement to buy as such so basically the match fixing definitely will indicate dishonesty definitely will indicate indiscipline and mental corruption 
and the concerned authority would be the bcci so bcci should obviously go ahead and then take action against the players but under section 420 it is definitely not applicable because it was just voluntarily handed over the money was voluntarily given what about the karnataka police act so karnataka police act says any betting amounts to gaming which is an offence under the karnataka police act but very very interesting explanation in section 2 clause 7 of the karnataka police act which says the game of chance does not include any athletic game or sport and since cricket is an athletic game or sport it will not come under a game of chance and hence betting in this particular uh, game also will not come under the karnataka police act so basically with respect to all these things this petition proceedings against the petitioners are quashed and thereby section 420 was not invoked against these players an extremely interesting decision my dear friends i wanted to share with you so the key words again com coming back to this code here is whoever cheats okay and thereby dishonestly induces the person so yes i was dishonest to you but i did not induce you a spectator to buy the ticket because of which it is not part of uh, section 420 of the indian penal code uh, which was a huge breather to those cricketers whatever said and done uh, law is the law this is how we need to check so though the court sympathized saying that yes i do do agree you have a sense of cheating you feel a sense you feel cheated but the thing is my dear friends you may feel betrayed but that is for the love of the game but law clearly says that it should be dishonestly dishonest inducement since dishonest inducement did not happen this would not be a case to fall under section 420 so i hope you enjoyed this uh, short video my dear friends i'll be making as and when i find some interesting cases i definitely it would want to come and share with you since this was a sport that i really love and i always felt that time when all these uh, cases happens again those uh, players mohammad azuruddin and all these cases that time i felt cheated i felt betrayed but then now through the prism of law through the eyes of law is it really cheating is what we need to see and that is not cheating uh, as per the law because now you have to go through bcci and bcci should take the necessary action so on this note i take leave my dear friends thank you so much please like subscribe and share this video and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon because i'll be coming out with some uh, you know interesting videos like this on that note take care my dear friends see you bye